The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your squeezably soft host. Once more, do we meet at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, what do we have going on? Well, we had a light volume uh, retest of the previous uh, uh, selling climax around uh, 3750. Uh, that had about 18 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated volume. Uh, we're far from that today, about 7.4 million or billion shares. So is it half? Be 16. So we're not even halfway there at uh, 207. So we're probably going to have a lot of uh, light volume days. Or, I mean, uh, light volume tests. But my guess, as I said uh, the last couple of days, I figure we're kind of queuing up for a bounce. And if that bounce uh, to, I think, is going to be around 4,000 on the S&P cash, ends up being lighter. Uh, then you have probably a good setup for an ABC on the way down. Uh, if they, we start seeing a little bit more volume come in, uh, that may be kind of a plateau that we hang on for uh, and to for a while. So I think at least we have a little bit of, uh, of sunshine coming our way. Don't you knock it off with them negative waves. Why don't you dig how beautiful it is out here? Why don't you say something righteous and hopeful for a change? Well, I'm saying something righteous and hopeful for a change. And Mad Dog, or Oddball, Oddball, uh, certainly uh, uh, echoes my sentiments there. So we'll be looking at uh, what I think is a little ray of sunshine going into probably Thursday of next week in a uh, four-day week. We are off on Monday, so markets are not open. But uh, other than that, I don't think there's a lot. Options, uh, at least for Friday's expiration, uh, tend to uh, are starting to uh, auger in like an Alabama tick at 3,800. There's no guarantee you won't get a surprise, but absence of a surprise, that's kind of where this thing is pointing at. Uh, as we said before, 3,820 was kind of where uh, I was, was my target um, on the uh, puts earlier in the week. And when we got to it, I just went ahead and got out. So you got a little bit more of a dip this morning, but uh, it's going to be on very light volume. It did get down to those previous lows, and uh, we'll see. Uh, doesn't mean that uh, the bear market's over. Uh, that would take a lot of effort uh, and won't happen overnight when it does happen. And I have no idea what would make that happen. Uh, can't think of anything, but that wouldn't be the first time a market didn't do what everybody else thought it was going to do. Uh, in the meantime, we have a uh, Tim Ord on at uh, 2.15 after the next break in about f uh, five, seven minutes. He sent me some charts if you want those charts uh, at any time, email me, especially into this break, and I'll get them out so uh, you can sit there and study them in all their glorious resolution, native resolution. Uh, but uh, just email me at path at tfnn.com, and I'll get those out during the break. Uh, and there's some other stuff going on. Um, I think we're going to talk about uh, – an individual chart on a monthly he sent me, and see what else is happening. I think that's about it. Um, when we there's a couple things uh, that we've been talking about, and I can't say that it's a hundred percent, but I think it's fairly a strong correlation. Unfortunately, it happened uh, at this at several things, 
Uh, where is my natural gas? I wanted to look at that. Uh, is it not on this? I don't know why it's not on there. We'll look at the UNG. Uh, crude oil's down about three bucks. We did have a, a ruling by the Supreme Court, uh, and that ruling pretty much says that the EPA does not have the ability to make laws out of whole cloth from a 1970 low. Uh, there is a, a kind of a thing that they uh, call a, uh, I'm going to, for a short term, I'm going to call it a big deal. And they're saying, you know, kind of on the edges, Congress uh, probably will allow you to do a few things. But on the really big things, it better be in a bill passed by Congress if you want to do it, Mr. EPA. Uh, they are also a little bit miffed at uh, the EPA for kind of lying about some of the stuff in this. Uh, uh, well, I guess the case is the EPA versus uh, West Virginia. And, of course, uh, they're basically Supreme Court saying, hey, you can do anything you want. Just get it passed by the Congress. And, of course, uh, running for <laughs> uh, probably governor of the state uh, is guy, Senator Manchin. And he's probably the linchpin on making sure that none, none of that gets done. So why we've been in a thing where everybody looked at producers – of energy is the uh, lead horse. This may be enough to start moving, at least uh, somewhat, uh, to those that are in the exploration range. But even uh, some of the other things like natural gas, I know there was a build, uh, but I'm not thinking that that's all there was. Uh, this bill will allow coal plants to continue on. As I said, you'd have to have an act of Congress uh, to thwart it now. But uh, natural gas off 13%. Um, again, start looking for lows in the last two weeks of August. Uh, seasonally, natural gas is always fairly weak. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if this puts a cap on natural gas going forward. I think a lot of people were uh, sure that uh, a lot of those uh, coal plants were going to go uh, unused and shut down. But... Uh, you know, you can uh, discuss right and wrong with your uh, priest, but uh, we're in the higher and lower business. And, of course, more supply generally means lower price. And uh, certainly for uh, natural gas, maybe unless uh, some of these coal plants are actually forced by an act of Congress to shut down, that may not happen. 877-927-6648. Uh, well, there's more. Uh, as uh, Jimmy the Den brings up, there's more to that ruling. They went about 80% the way that I thought that they would. They didn't just come down and throw a blanket over everybody. Uh, but uh, they're pretty much on the line now of saying uh, you have to use uh, 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 this uh, kind of strict uh, adherence uh, to anything. So the SEC was planning on doing a bunch of stuff without an act of Congress. Uh, we've seen the CDC um, also uh, get uh, thwarted uh, at the Supreme Court level. Uh, probably more government agencies are going to try this, but uh, this is going to be a fast track from now on to the Supreme Court. And if you don't have congressional authority to do something big, you're probably not getting We'll be back in a minute with Tim Moore. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. A market already in progress over most of these TFNN stations. Uh, we're down uh, 12 points on the S&P cash after going down and testing what I think are some recent lows that will probably be on lighter volume. Uh, Dow's down 138, NASDAQ's down 70, uh, Russell's uh, down 4, crude oil's down about 3.7 bucks. And uh, I was talking about UNG and natural gas and that ruling too. It's off uh, about 13 and a half percent today on that. Uh, I think on bigger builds, but also uh, the thought uh, that we discussed in the first segment about uh, coal being around a little longer uh, than a lot of people thought. All right, we're gonna go to uh, Tim Ord, who's on the line. He's written a newsletter for darn near 30 years, if not over 30 years. Uh, and uh, you can always reach him at ord-oracle.com if you want the charts uh, that we're going to talk about. Uh, just email me, email me at path at tfnn.com, and I'll make sure those go out uh, during the breaks. Uh, but uh, Tim's won uh, many awards for Timer of the Year in different facets, and uh, we want to welcome once again Tim Ord uh, to the Power Trading Hour. How are you doing today, Tim? Good. Thanks for having me on, Dave. Um, you want to just jump right to the charts, or do you want to talk about something else? Or well, um, I'm I, as much as I want to talk about the Amber Heard trial, I think we probably can oh, go yeah. right on <laughs> to the charts. Yeah, the Amber Heard trial. We're all yeah, that was, we're uh, all about that, right? Anyway, you want yeah, to go to which all, chart one? Yeah, chart one, and it's kind of a unique indicator. I'm a big fan of uh, panic, and I look at a lot of type of panic indicators. Like uh, a trend is kind of a panic indicator when it gets you know above 1.5. Uh, the ticks are kind of a panic indicator when when everybody sells. Um, you know the ticks go down because it measures you know trades on the uptick and downtick. And the VIX is actually a panic indicator, and the VVIX is also, which is the VIX of the VIX. Is another kind of a panic indicator. So anyhow, I, I'm on this indicator. I'm just looking at the VIX to the VVIX. In other words, when the 
VIX is going faster up than the VVIX, this um, ratio goes up. And uh, this this chart I got um, goes back, looks like about a year, maybe a little bit more than a year. But anyhow, I, I put the RSI to this ratio. So anyhow, when, when VIX really jumps fast, it's kind of a panic situation. Uh, it's kind of like everybody's hitting the, the sell button. And so I measure the velocity of the VIX. And that, that worked out pretty well, but it seems to work out better is that ratio of the VIX to the BBIX ratio. When it really shoots up and RSI gets above 70, that's usually an indication that the market's gone down too quick. Uh, so if a market kind of drags down, just gently goes down, those are really bad news because that can go on for a while. But when a market really jerks down in a, in a very fast fashion, usually they're kind of climatic. And that and, and a lot of these indicators will, will explode on you, telling that you're probably near a short-term low because you got panic in the market. And if you got panic in the market, you're near some sort of a low. Uh, so, so I tried to develop a lot of indicators on that that theory, I guess you might say. But anyhow, this uh, indicator here is updated to today, and the RSI is the ratio of the or RSI is the indicator for the the ratio of the BBI or the BIX to BIX ratio. And right now we're uh, Around around eighty on the RSI, and the bottom window is the percent volume or a percent uh, Bollinger band for that. In other words, when it's above one, the B, uh, BIX to BBIX ratio is above the upper Bollinger band. And so, when you get those two things to occur, a lot of times, at a minimum, you're at least, usually at least a short-term low. Uh, if not a bigger low, and went back in history over the last year, and uh, find those times when the RSI is above seventy, and the percent uh, Bollinger Band is above the upper Bollinger Band, and we reached that uh, here yesterday. Now the market's down here a little bit today, but it does appear on a short-term basis, anyhow, that you're making some sort of a low. And if you notice, we're going into the 4th of July period. If you ever look back in history, a lot of times the 4th of July period, uh, actually a lot of holidays um, mark uh, some type of reversal. Uh, so we may stay down today, maybe maybe not a whole lot, don't know. And tomorrow will probably become a dead day going into a three-day weekend. But my indicator suggests that we're making a low in this vicinity uh, because we do have some panic uh, according to the VIX, and actually uh, even my uh, trend and tick indicators are also seeing panic right here. So we're probably uh, making some sort of a low here, not saying the market's going to be up tomorrow. Probably, I don't know, probably won't because of the three-day holiday. Everybody's probably trying to get out of the market so they don't have to worry about it uh, over the holiday period. But uh, anyhow, this indicator is a flashing bullish. It's not a perfect indicator, <clears throat> but it works the majority of the time, I'll put it that way. So, um, <clears throat> anyhow, I like it. I use it. It doesn't give a lot of signals. You know, you don't get one every week, but you usually get one about it almost every month. And we <clears throat> we got one here in, in mid-June, and now we're getting another one in um, late June. So the one in uh, April, late April there, that was a failure. Stopped the market coming down, actually kind of flipped sideways, but after that it went back down again. Uh, that's really the only uh, failure there is. But <clears throat> I'm thinking here we're making probably a, a, a decent, important low, and I think we possibly get back to the swing high of May, which is up around that 420 area. I think that's where we're going to go. Then from there, I don't know. But... You know, usually in um, the summer, you don't. A lot of times, these are trading range during the summer, and you really get trending markets in the fall. So I, I'm thinking we're, you know, in my opinion, we're, we're probably that June low is not going to be broken, and uh, we may uh, start a trading range uh, between uh, oh about 380 to to 420. 
probably over the next couple of months and and uh, maybe September, October, we make uh, a, a, a low that basically rallies all into year end. So I'm, I'm thinking the decline, you know, the, the massacre we had the first half of the year uh, is pretty much over. Everybody kind of threw in the, the towel and called it quits. Because I got a lot of different type panic and a lot of different type indicators. So at least we're going to stabilize here, I think. So, um, well, we'll be back in just a little bit. Uh, we've got Tim Ord on the line of the Ord Oracle.com. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit. Uh, maybe you want to pull up a chart of the spies while we're doing it. Um, I'm kind of looking at uh, kind of a blowout that kind of we came back into the trading range. Now we're kind of back over to these days uh, where we did have some huge volume on the 13th and and pretty much through the 15th of June. And uh, you maybe you've got advantage to of this sector. Now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, getting more charts out here for those that request it, uh, if they want these uh, at home. Uh, to mark up any way you choose. We've got Tim Ord on the line, and uh, um, we're going to come back. Did you have, get a chance to pull up the uh, spies there and look at what I'm looking at here? Yeah, I just sent you a chart. Oh, okay. Uh, you can pull it. I don't know if you can pull it up. but uh, I can. Uh, let's good. see. Hang on. Give, give me a second, and I'll have it up here for with all of our other wonderful charts okay open uh, why uh, probably didn't name it anything okay so we've got that no, up didn't in name front anything. Of everybody. all right you know I was, I was talking about ticks and trend here um, a little bit ago 
And there's some blue numbers on the chart. I just go back to the June low. I got 2.88 and 745. But 2.88 is a trend close, and a 745 is, is a downtick close for that day. And the market kind of went sideways a couple of days and fell again, and you had a, a 2 and a, eight, and a minus 838. Well, that's another, again, the trend closed at 2 that day, and 838 downtick readings. Those are pretty rare signals, especially uh, you get two in a row like that. You know, you think, well, that first one failed. No, it didn't. Actually, the second one just added power to the first. And so you got to rally up. Market went up for, you know, four or five days there. And I think all we're doing right now is going down and testing last Friday's gap. Um, You know, that's my conclusion. And if you look at trend today, um, see where we are. We got a 2.21 trend right now. Um, and so the trend's really kind of just blowing out here over the last, you know, week or couple of weeks here. And it's all coming around the 365 to 380 area, uh, give or take. Uh, every time you get down in this level, the trend starts to explode. Well, that's a, that's a, a support range. And I've seen this in the past uh, over the years. Uh, when the uh, So when the trend's actually explodes in a certain price range over numerous days, usually that's a massive support. So I'm thinking an important, according to the ticks and trend right here, I think an important intermediate term low is forming in this range uh, because that's where all the panic's forming, right between, you know, 365 to 380 area. And you won't, we're only down here on the, on the S&Ps, you know, less than a half a point. And you got a trend right now at 2.23. Um, you know, if the market was down, you know, uh, two, three percent or something like that, maybe that trend over two would be uh, justifiable. But you know, we're we're not even down a half percent, and the trend's totally blowing out here. So I'm thinking this is probably a low here. I'm not sure what tomorrow's going to bring, but um, you know, we're we're finishing going down. So uh, I think the next upside target. Uh, I got a, uh, you know, scenario there to 420. I'm thinking we're going to go back up to that uh, late May, early June highs and have to see what's go- going on there. Uh, so, you know, I thought this was kind of important. This kind of also goes with my VIX and VVIX ratio thing. It's just another added uh, panic situation. Uh, if you don't get panic, you don't have a bottom. If you got panic, you're looking at a low. So, you know. Since we got panic, we're looking at a low. <laughs> well, I was going to say that uh, you're kind of a Johnny come lately to the tick and trend. As you uh, you only wrote your article what in 1993 on this, so it's good. Yeah, we're almost probably. 30 years down the road on using the tick and trend to actually buy lows and highs and sell highs. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, Stocks and commodities. Here, I kind of, I can't. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I think it was a stocks and commodities article, wasn't it? About 1993? Yeah, it's, yeah, way back there. Uh, um, I, yeah, I wrote several articles for him, and it kind of started off with just ticks alone. Then uh, later on, I added uh, the trend to it, and it, it's kind of a good confirmation uh, to have both in, in your, I guess, pocket when you get both blowing out at the same time. You got something that you got to pay attention to so and we have that now so uh so i'm thinking something important here is going on you know i i don't i think for the year i think this is probably the low for the year in my opinion um but you know it could be wrong been wrong before so but this is kind of a usual situation where you get these trends consistently high uh for the last couple of weeks and and previous times that was usually an important low so We'll see, um, but yeah, that's, that's I wrote that back in a long time ago. So I, I still use it. I kind of got away from it, and I came back to it because it was, you know, really reliable. So, but if you ever see these big declines that continue down, uh, a lot of times you don't see any panic as the markets. You know, they're, you know, evidently the. The small investor is buying that decline to keep these uh, ticks and trend in check that don't show panic because 
when you, when everybody heads to the exit door, you know, these two indicators, the ticks and trend, explode. Uh, and that's what you want to do. Uh, so it kind of transfers the money from one sec, uh, from the dumb money to the smart money, I guess you might say. And that, that ticks and trend help signal when that happens. So it's a pretty good indicator. Uh, it's worked uh, over time. And, um, and I kind of label them here so you can see um, what's going on. Uh, so, you, you know, you, and, uh, it's a good indicator to use. So, Good enough. Um, you want to go to chart two now? All right, chart two. Uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, chart two is, oh, that's chart three. Ah, chart, okay, chart two, is, this is arms again. The top window is a 10-day average of the arm. And this, uh, this chart goes back to 2013. And it's pretty rare. It doesn't happen very often, uh, but so this chart goes back nine years, and uh, the top window is a 10-day average of the trend, and it's pretty rare to get above 1.5, but when it does, it's usually an important low. And so we had it back in 2019. It, it was kind of a minor low. We had it back in 2016. That looked like it was probably some major low. And uh, at the June low, the 10-day got over 1.5, and and actually the five-day, the two-day, and the three-day all got over into maximum territory. Uh, so that's the reason why I think this is more of an near midterm low than a just a short-term low, um, because we got so much panic going on here. Um, so it's, it's a it's a longer-term indicator, so it's meant to pick out the intermediate term, at least the 10-day trend does. So. Since we got panic on the 10-day trend, uh, it's a bigger time frame. We, we, there's there's a base at least forming here. If, if uh, you know, in my opinion, the intermediate term low of situation. So, uh, you know, if the market does go up here and we get extreme optimism to counterbalance the extreme negativity we had or the extreme uh, panic we had in the um, these indicators. They may neutralize it, but if the market kind of goes up grudgingly and the ticks and trend kind of remain uh, on the bullish side, it, they'll probably just continue. I hear you. I hear the music. So okay, we'll talk next time around. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes with Tim. We got a couple more charts to go, and uh, that's it. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are you
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle.com, uh, we're on chart number two, Tim, and uh, we have about five people asking for you to comment on gold before this segment is out. But uh, we have this chart and one more to get to and maybe even another. Uh, so uh, we're going to need to step it up a bit. Two, I think we just went over. That's that 10-day arms. Yep. Okay. So, so you done with that? Yeah, we're done with that. Okay. Take a look at chart, chart three. And um, you got it up? I do. All right, uh, this is the American Association of in Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratio, and that's that center chart. And it's pretty uh, right. The, uh, I got a mark there. This is uh, sep or a June twenty eighth reading, which is point three one, point three one, and it's only been that low. I think three times going back to two thousand seven, and it, it's kind of hard to see. But I, I put all that 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 blue line on the American Association of Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratio is at 0 0.40 reading. And we hit it once in uh, in uh, the May low, and we hit it again in the uh, June low. So we got actually two readings. Uh, they're kind of not believing that. Um, anyhow, the, the, what they're saying here is everybody's pretty much on the bearish side. So you want everybody really to be bearish. It's another... Uh, it's not really a panic reading, but it's a sentiment reading because nobody's really interested in the stock market right now. If they're in it, they're in it in a small way or, you know, probably even short. But previous times when we got this low, you're at least at minimum uh, at your midterm low. And in most cases, you're at, at a uh, uh, your midterm low. And so it's kind of unusual to get this low. And last, you know, like I said, on June 28th, we were 0.31. And uh, so it's pretty extreme to be this low. So I think this carries a lot of weight and adds to that bullish trend and, and tick reading along with the VIX and VBIX ratio thing. There's a lot of stuff uh, saying that uh, some important low is being made here. So uh, when you get very few people to agree with your um, what you're talking about, Usually you're right. So, you know, I'm a big bull. Nobody likes to hear it, but there's a lot of indicators out there uh, that says that at least at a minimum, we're going to go sideways here, uh, not down either sideways or up. So, uh, and we always got July like, 4th coming in there. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I always like what Mark Twain said, which is when everybody has one opinion, it's time to pause and reflect. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right, and, that, and that's a good point because we're every right now, according to this bull bear racial thing going on, everybody has that same opinion, which is basically be out of the market or short or something like that. So there's very few people, uh, according to this bull bear racial here, is is agreeable that uh, an important low is is being made here. So that's the reason why I said, you know, about 15 minutes ago, I'm thinking this is 
more than a short-term low. It looks like an near-term low. Uh, and I actually, I'm personally thinking we're not even going to go back down to that mid-June low and test it. I think uh, that's probably the low for the year. But I've been wrong before, so but there's a lot of indicators suggest that. So this is another good indicator that pretty much has stood the time uh, the the test of time uh, going back. So and this indicator doesn't really get a, get a lot of signals. You know, maybe get one or two a year at most. And you never really get this low. Something this low has happened last time it happened is 2020. And before that, it was 2016. So um, uh, it's kind of important here what, what goes on. So anyhow, just another indicator. Um, we can go on to another chart if we got time. We certainly do, but we got to wedge gold in, and I got a lot of people asking me about that. So, you want to do gold first and just talk about it, and then we'll go to the, um, yeah, the I chart? Yeah, I'll send a chart out. But what I'm looking at um, is uh, the bullish, the RSI for the bullish percent index for the gold miners index. Uh, yesterday it closed at 3.03, and now we're breaking down. I, I see that, and we're down about. About 3.4 percent. We're putting this update on, and with the RSI of the bullish percent index getting this low, I still think we're setting at an imminent term low. If you go back to 2013, there's a trend line on the uh, uh, on the, at least on GDX is around the 28 to 30 area, and that's. That's where that depends how you do it, but you know you can draw it different ways. But usually, you know, come in around twenty eight to thirty, and with the bullish percent index on a gold miners index RSI, uh, anything below ten has been bullish. We're down at three point oh three right now, so everybody's pretty much washed out of the market. They're either out of the market uh, or they're not buying here. Uh, so I'm thinking we're back to basically major support. And we're probably looking a little over right around another holiday, and we're probably going to go back up. And next time up on XAU, there's three tops at 170 area. And I think the next top or the next time up will be the fourth time, and I think that's the time we break through. Uh, so, but I, I don't think a, a, a big declines here. I think, you know, we're going to, this is a kind of a washout move that probably. Won't end today, but it may end tomorrow. Going into a three-day um, July Fourth holiday, so that's how I'm reading that. Do you I think uh, we got two chart, minutes? But... Uh, you want to go through the the one chart that uh, we didn't get to? Uh, I sent uh, right. Tim uh, several charts uh, of uh, uh, stocks kind of testing previous lows on lighter volume. Uh, you went to the monthly on this one, but it's uh, amplitude. AMPL, and I have that out. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's a monthly chart. The only thing I want to prove here: these these signals, you know, especially uh, uh, selling climaxes, they can come anywhere. They can come on a monthly chart, weekly chart, or daily chart. And obviously, the monthly chart is an uh, intermediate term chart because it's pretty much said, you know, the downtrend is pretty much ending because, you know, everybody hit the sell button. When you get volume that explodes, you know, 100% compared to the previous month, you got everybody went to the exit. So you got really nobody left to sell here. And, uh, you know, a few sellers are still going on, but they're in small orders compared to the one we had back in February. So I'm thinking this is making a major low here, and this goes along with the stock market. I think everybody is, is pretty much panicked out of the market. There's really no sellers left, and this this amplitude uh, stock uh, is is making lower lows. As much, this month ends tomorrow on this stock, and I and if you look, ideally you want the volume to be higher than last month's volume. This month's volume, which is June, be higher than last month's volume. The reason why is you want to hit a the, uh, the high of, yep. of May hit a higher yeah. high. So We're out of time here. And, of course, uh, this is uh, Calendar Awareness Month. And uh, the month's over today. <laughs> so the, these charts, when they close, oh, okay. that'll be it for the month. Thanks, okay. Tim. We'll see you in a few weeks. All right. 
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses, where you can now get up to 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and they never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Tuesday, July 5th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we uh, get out here, uh, I'm kind of looking uh, for, for a variety of other reasons uh, about what this market's uh, going to do. But uh, it's nothing new. I thought that uh, we were looking for something. I thought we were, you know, we were, the July 4th thing was probably either going to be a high or some kind of low. And uh, it looks like for everything right now about a low, options continue to kind of auger in right around the 3,800 uh, level, uh, 380 on the spies. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But, uh, you know, do, uh, is there a little wiggle room? Yeah, but eh, we're down with 34 points today. But kind of the big story here uh, that I'm looking at is more about the volume as we get into the last time we were down here, which about 18 billion shares. And right now we're doing about uh, 8.3 billion shares. So we're not even 50% of the way there for that big volume day. Now, could we retest the low of uh, earlier today? Yeah, I'm not long. Uh, I haven't recommended uh, people that uh, to buy it. Um, again, a lot of times you go into these three-day weekends, and they'll make you sweat. Uh, so generally the thing is, if you think you're going to get a bounce, uh, just wait until Friday's close or maybe wait until the first couple hours on Tuesday. But uh, we, when we do come back, there will be some fun buying. Um, 
Generally, that is a markup phase. And by the afternoon on Tuesday, they start throwing 401k money at it. And maybe that lasts all of a couple of days or three days. Maybe that uh, is enough gasoline to get some uh, rather damp wood uh, lit and stay lit. Um, but uh, as I said, I'm not expecting a great deal. I think we're kind of in a range that could go back up to 4000 on the S&P cash. That's about it. Uh, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll be back tomorrow like a bad penny. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to 